Well, I'm I'm here with Sherry, aka Lucy. Yes. Lucy. <laughs> and you know, we were just talking. You had brought a horse here, uh, Asa, for training. Yeah. And he's like 17 hands, or. Oh yeah, 17 too. He's 17 too. Mm-hmm. And you're scared of heights. I am. <laughs> like really scared of heights. And yeah. so, so I encourage you to get a get a shorter one. Yeah, you said to yeah. me, why do short girls always get tall horses? Yeah. <laughs> so I then bought her, and now she's here for training with you. All right. So can you tell me a little bit about her? What's Her Her name's Willow? Her name is Willow. And, uh, she's five years old, and she's a Gypsy Vanner cross with a, um, Clydesdale is okay. her mom. And uh, she's five, and she's <laughs> spoiled. And she, she hasn't been off the farm much? You've had her at your house for how long? Five years. She's oh, wow. She's never been. This is the first time she's been off the farm. So she was born, foaled, and then you brought her to your place? And, and that's... she's been there ever since. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. And um, so the goal is for us to start her under saddle, I take it? She's not started yep. yet? Nope. <laughs> nope, she's all yours. Okay. So my hopes is that um, she learns that she can go from point A to point B without running over a human, to stand and hold up her feet for a farrier, do some groundwork, get a saddle on her, bridle in her mouth, and someday ride her. All right. But um, I think when you're young and you're in your teens and your 20s you hop on horses bareback and you jump over fences and you get off and you laugh and then you realize that's stupid (laughs) and then you get some training and you realize how dangerous that was and then you get to be my age and today's my birthday oh happy birthday (laughs) (laughs) thank you it's my husband's way of keeping his wife safe and giving me what i want and um so hopefully my goal is you trust your trainer, you trust your horse, and then that gives you confidence to ride at my age. Yeah. Sounds good. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Well, we're excited to work with her, and um, we're going to bring you guys along with us. So today was going to be an evaluation. We're going to take her out, kind of see what we got. We've established okay. we need to work on ground, the groundwork a little bit. Yep. You know, it's a new place, so she needs time to get settled in, that sort of thing. Yep. And um, uh, she was kind enough to let us uh, use her in the YouTube channel here. So hopefully there will be some interesting videos that come up along the way, and we'll keep you guys posted. Hey everybody, I gotta give you guys a round of applause. We raised over $4,400 in two weeks uh, for Windy Hill Equine Rescue, uh, which is a place uh, that is very special to my heart. Um, Becky is a wonderful person. She does so many things to help horses and people, and it's just a really, really well-run horse rescue. And um, Becky is is great at doing all that stuff, but she's not good at asking for help. <laughs> and so by us asking uh, you guys for help, you guys rose to the occasion. We raised $4,400. The goal was $3,500. We sur- surpassed that, and so I'm super proud of that. Um, I just want to give a shout out to our top donors, um, Debbie Riley, Michelle Brook, Doreen Levy, Michael Steinbach, which I also think might be Lisa Steinbeck, um, Deborah Reinhardt, Brenda Reswick. You guys were our top donors. Um, I think we had 67 people donate to this. Thank you all. Um, every bit of it helps. It goes directly to the horses. It's, it's actually the hay fund this year. Um, hay got more, more expensive, and so that's what we're doing. Um, so if you guys haven't seen that video already, make sure you go and watch the Daisy video. We're looking to also find a home for Daisy. So if anybody's in the market for a horse, um, Daisy's available. She's going to be continuing her training down there, and uh, she's going to be a great horse for somebody. So thank you guys all very much for those donations. I'm excited this morning. We're going to get Willow out today. Um, we gave her yesterday to settle in, and now we're going to get her out. And for me, it's always fun to um, get to know a new horse and see where they're at. So we're going to put a halter on Willow, take her out, and uh, today will be more of an evaluation. We're going to find out um, how she handles some pressure, how she handles speed, what she thinks of the new environment and obstacles, and uh, just generally kind of getting a, getting a baseline feel for her. So today is test day. Hey guys, if you would like to see a more uh, in-depth, thorough videos of my fundamental series and kind of my program in general, or if you would like to be able to ask me specific questions about your horse, even send in videos, I offer all that through my Patreon page. We post a new training video every week. It's $10 a month. It's an incredible value. I hope to see you guys on there. We'll put a link in the description below. Let's get back to the video. She, she doesn't have really any connection to the human, and that's part of what leads to her being difficult to uh, to lead on the ground. So we're gonna start with that. And uh, so this first part here, and I'm just trying to kind of get to the round pen, make my environment a little bit simpler. But this is where we'll start. You know, she's calling out to the other horses and uh, has no problem kind of walking past me or eating grass and things like that. And something that, um, 
Lucy disclosed to us after the interview was that she had actually had this horse push her into a wall and she broke her wrist or her hand or arm or something like that. And so my, my point to sharing that is <laughs> it's, it's really important that a horse is easy to handle on the ground and safe to be around. Um, cause any of these behaviors would also happen under saddle. Like she would, her just kind of taking over and doing whatever she wants would, would happen under saddle, um, when we start her. So that's one of the goals. But, um, if they're not safe to be around on the ground, that's going to be a tough, a tough deal, a tough place to start. So, uh, fundamentally going to the horse's hindquarters and getting those to yield first is going to help her lower down. I would say a lot of this behavior is not her trying to be pushy or dominant towards me. This behavior is her being a little worried and concerned in the new environment. So by me getting control over the hindquarters first, it should work pretty well. We should get pretty good results right away. And that will help her um, start to decompress a little bit, start to relax um, and settle into the new environment. You can see her head is up and she's in more of that um, almost concerned, hyper alert state of mind. Um, and you can see she's kind of paying no, no mind to me here. So again, we're going to add a little pressure here. If I felt like this horse was more pushy and dominant. So watch again, I'm tapping here and I'm going to create a situation where she's going to find relief when she looks at me. So watch this here. We're just keep going to these hindquarters, keep making this uncomfortable until she disengages them. And her response here was to go forward right there. She went, she started to disengage a little bit. She's kind of sort of looking at me and then we're gonna let her get relief here. Now, now she didn't really acknowledge that. Okay, so we're gonna need to do that again. <clears throat> but her first response when I added pressure here, oh, see there we got a hindquarter yield straight away. Very good. There was a little decompression right there, a little head shake, started to lower just a little bit, okay? So these are the signs here. Now again, what I was gonna say there, it, when a horse is being more left-brained, more dominant, more like intentionally, deliberately pushy towards the human, it's with their nose and their head, okay? And um, then if that was the case, I would be moving her front end away from me. So there's, there's a rhyme and a reason behind every, everything I do, do with these horses. Again, we're gonna to go to the hindquarters. It's a good opportunity there when she whinnied and called out because that meant she wasn't paying a lot of attention uh, to the human. And my goal is to drive her more with the stick. The rope is here as a safety net. So I'm not teaching her to lead. She already knows how to lead. So I'm putting pressure here. And if she goes to walk off, then she hits the halter. Again, that's a tiny little adjustment, but it makes a huge difference. So the end result is gonna be that she'll actually yield her hindquarters and face me with no halter and lead rope, because I'm going to the stick and string first. So we need those hindquarters to cross over. That inside hind, that left hind needs to step over the outside right hind. There, good deal. So again, a lot of horses, you guys see me start off by owning space and creating a personal space bubble. I could do that with her, and that would, that would help me be safer here, but it wouldn't help her calm down. And right now I don't need her to be safer for me. I need her to calm down a little bit. She, it's funny, you can see her trying. She's, she, she's kind of just going, and she's trying to relax. And then she went and says she's, she's kind of torn between two modes right now. And uh, she wants to be calm and relaxed, but her instincts are telling her, you got to worry about the other horses and see where they're at. And my friend uh, Asa back at home isn't here with me right now, which apparently uh, Lucy <laughs> mentioned to me that Asa was having a hard time with his his girlfriend being gone. <clears throat> so maybe that can be a good good opportunity for, for Lucy and Asa to have a little more connection. Asa is her other horse that she has at home, who I trained, I think like six, seven years ago for. Again, I'm wanting just the hind feet to step over. That's what we're looking for here. There we go. See the head shake and the head's lowering. This is, and you can see even just her standing more casual here. Um, the situation is decompressing here a little bit. Okay, so now I'm just gonna, just gonna start to kind of go for a walk. I still need to do the owning space and still need to teach her to move her front end away from me and still need to do all that stuff. I don't skip any steps with any individual horse because of their personality, but based on what they're, where I, I try to always follow the principle, work with the horse where they're at. 
Well, she got worried as we went from her pen to this round pen. And so my first job is to help her get more connected with me and more settled, okay? So that's all I'm doing in this round pen right now is just teaching her to be connected with me, to be able to travel around. And I want her to realize the herd is here. The herd is with her, okay? So I'm the herd and she needs to stay. There's the turn loose. So again, I kept tapping there because she hadn't actually crossed over and stepped under. And I need to be, as a good leader, I need to be consistent with what I'm looking for. Okay, so I can't just go, well, that was kind of sort of it, so we'll release there. I need to be particular, be specific about it. Um, so you see, I'll just keep challenging this. See how I'm going to the hip there? And look at that. See, no, no stick and string required that time. So that's the progress that we're looking for here. And we'll kind of walk off somewhere. The other thing that's important with this is I'm not just standing around talking to the camera here. I'm moving around. I'm giving her something to follow. There's kind of an old joke of what does it take to be a, a leader? One follower. <laughs> so if your, horse, if your horse can be that one follower, then you can be the leader. Okay. So by me kind of out busying her and just moving around, I'm giving her something to pay attention to. And then each time I'll just keep challenging this here, saying, hey, can you, can you stay connected with me? You know, if you think about it, anything that we would try to do with her, saddling, riding, more groundwork, if she's calm and she's paying attention to us, then what she doesn't do, she just won't know how to do, right? But if, we, if I try to just power through and I try to do other things with her, do the obstacles, saddle her, ride her, whatever, um, and she's not paying attention, her, her mind is a little worried, she's a little bit off with the other horses mentally, then um, anything is gonna be challenging at that point. So, so baseline, I wanna start with a horse that's connected with me. And this is kind of my whole deal of just building a connection um, with everything we do. It's funny, in previous videos, one of the comments um, that I've gotten from people is, why don't you do the join up? Um, some of you might be familiar with Monty Roberts and he has the, the join up system, which is fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But to me, bringing her in here and, and asking her to circle me for a half an hour until she gets a little tired is actually not going to be as beneficial as me taking, I mean, this has been a few minutes of getting her calmer and more connected with me and I didn't have to run her around. So I, I always try to take the path of um, being direct with what I'm, I'm looking for in terms of like, not just exercising her in order to get her calm. Direct as in going to the hindquarters to get her to decompress, to face me, um, is going to be a more efficient route than just moving her feet around a bunch. Um, so there's a rhyme and a reason behind everything that we do here. So now that we got her a little bit more connected, um, now I'm gonna check out some, some basic yields, okay? So I wanna just kinda see, um, she understands, bringing her head down, let's see how she, how she backs up here. So again, today's evaluation day. I wanna know what I've got myself into here. Um, that's what it's all about. Um, so let me know in the comments, what are some of your favorite yields? If you're gonna go horse shopping and look for a new horse or you're gonna work with a, a new one, what are some of your favorite tests that you like to do with the horses? Okay, I'll tell you what, one of mine is I'm gonna get the flag out and I wanna see what her response is to the flag. The other one that's one of my favorites that we're gonna to get to here in a second is taking a horse through the obstacles. That's one of my favorite. I love to see what is a horse's natural response to obstacles. So we're gonna take her shopping here in a minute. Now Lucy said she had trouble with her feet. And I'm gonna say that right off the bat, if the horse is not connected with you and they're a little worried, they're gonna be hard to handle their feet. So imagine me trying to trim her feet today, uh, or the farrier was here and he was gonna trim her feet when I first brought her in here and she's not paying any attention. Now, she's already more relaxed and paying attention, so I imagine her feet are gonna be easier to handle now. But I do wanna know baseline, is she trying to kick me? Um, but she seems pretty willing and cooperative there. So I'm thinking she was probably a little worried and distracted and that was what was causing trouble. Um, so right now all the yields feel good, which is kind of what I suspected. I don't think she's gonna have a lot of trouble with yields. I think it's gonna be more about keeping her connected and settled uh, with the human. I'm gonna ask her to flex here. Lateral flexion is a really important um, part of putting a first ride on a horse, you wanna be able to bend them to a stop and a one rein stop there. 
So we're just gonna test this out there. She gave, even if it was to go for a fly, she gave. So we're gonna release there. One little pro tip here while you're doing this, a lot of people wanna see that horse's head all the way to the side right away. You don't need to see it all the way to the side. I just need her to give. So when I say work with your horse where they're at, she's leaning on it right there. So I could pull on it and I could make her give more, but here I'm just gonna wait for her to give from this position. And when she gives from right here, I'm gonna release. Now I can tell she's a little bit distracted. So this is still a little bit early of a thing from there. She gave, very good. So we'll release there. I'll tell you what though, I already like this horse. She just seems, she seems sweet. I don't think she wants any trouble. I think she needed to feel comfortable and wanted to give. So she's already uh, winning, winning me over here. I, I am also, I'm a little biased because I, I uh, some of you guys remember some videos of a horse named Snacks. Uh, that I had in here and I like fell in love with that horse. He was just so fun and so cool and he was a gypsy cross as well. So I'm all, I've already got a good uh, good taste in my mouth for these gypsy cross horses. There we go. There's a little give there. So I think she's pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and test her now with accepting the human. Again, I'm expecting this to go pretty well. She's five years old. So we're probably going to run into some issues maybe when we start asking her to work a little harder. Um, but at five years old, I know she comes into the barn every night, so she's probably very comfortable with humans, uh, which is a good thing because that's one of the pieces that we need um, for her to accept. Oh, a little jumpy there, so I turned up the volume here a little bit. Again, I'm going to wave her. We call this the, the drunken sailor test. And uh, something that's interesting, oh, and then we got a little worried Winnie there. Something that's interesting, when I'm walking around her slowly, how people normally would be around her, she's fine. She's not scared of me. I picked up her feet. All that thing. As soon as I turned up the volume and I started waving and, and approaching her with some more energy, she got a little worried. And then she thinks about leaving. So that's why you see me disengage her there. This is building depth to her understanding, okay? Because in order for us to safely mount her for riding, she needs to be really comfortable with a human, not just a little bit comfortable. Like, have you ever seen the video of those horses where maybe kids are crawling underneath them and jumping over top or running from behind them and jumping on? Those horses have depth of confidence uh, with a human, okay? So hers is a little bit surface level. So we need to expose her to a little more energy. And me running into her here and uh, go, this guy's kind of weird. He comes running in waving, but... He's all right. So we just gotta make sure she's okay with all that stuff. And uh, that went pretty good. So I'm not too worried about that. I would say that was a very average response. Um, the only thing, I mean, it's slightly below average response is just her getting as worried as she did going from point A to point B. But that's also average because I know that she hasn't gone off the farm very much. <clears throat> And so I know that she needs to get more comfortable being in new places. Now, again, she, she had gotten settled and then she came out of it. And that's where you saw the whinnying, the head elevated. She's not paying attention to me moving around her anymore. So again, as you develop a horse, you got to realize their, their attention span is like a muscle that you have to flex it. You have to grow it by using it more. Okay. So while I'm with her, I'm going to challenge her to pay attention to me and to keep her attention there. Very good. Now you see her head coming down. She's interested in me. She's connecting with the flag. So we're gonna go ahead and work this flag here a little bit. So this test is, can she read my intention and not the flag? And you can see, she's not reading my intention whatsoever. She's only reading the flag. So because she had such a significant reaction, I'll go ahead and take her away from it. But again, this is a test. So when I'm doing a test, I want to see what their responses are. I could have, you know, wadded the flag up if I said, my only goal is to touch her with it. I could make it really still, um, you know, and I could present it to her like this. Okay, I can, it's okay. Well, that would be to get her used to it. I'm not trying to get her, I mean, I am getting her used to it, but you have to understand today is test day. It's evaluation. I want to know where she's at. So I'm, I'm kind of, sort of giving her, see there she went to kick me. That was her getting defensive about this flag. So this is, again, tells you that a lot of her confidence is, uh, is just surface level. 
So again, I'm gonna keep interrupting that thought. So basically, she's kind of okay until she's not. And then once she's not, it's every man for themselves or every horse for themselves. That got a little better, so I'll take it away. So the secret there is she got no relief from me or the flag when she got bothered. As soon as she tried to understand it and get comfortable with it, flag went away. She got relief. What's interesting is it's actually more human nature that if you do something and it bothers the horse, to stop doing it. But what are you teaching them if you take it away when they get bothered? You're saying to them, I'm gonna, as soon as something bothers you, it'll go away as long as you react and you act like a prey animal. My job is to challenge her to not act like a prey animal. So again, here, there, she backed away from it. That's fine. I didn't say you had to stand perfectly still. I just said you can't run me over or try to kick me when I'm waving the flag, okay? So she chose to retreat the situation a little bit and back up. That's a better response. One of the things you could just ask yourself, could I ride that, <laughs> okay? And it's like, when she backed up a few steps to get room from her and the flag, you go, yeah, we could ride that. Um, but could she handle, um, or, but you know, would you want to ride it if somebody's working a flag or something's bothering her and, uh, she starts, you know, moving all around, trying to kick and trying to escape, you know, if you were sitting on her at that moment, that's when she might think about bucking or doing something more dramatic. Okay. So now I'll go ahead and walk away from her as I'm working the flag here. Halter got in her mouth there a little bit. Now, again, you see a little reaction when I'm moving the flag. I'm trying to move the, around the flag in a way that's right on the edge of what she can handle, okay? And that's, that's where I'm operating at. I'm not trying to make this as easy as possible. This tool is an exposure tool. I'm trying to expose her to pressure. So just this flag moving is pressure. I don't have to be touching her for it to be pressure. I'm trying to expose her to something going from the ground to on her back. This is emulating the rider stepping up and down, the saddle pad, fly spray, the farrier. This flag is representing all those things that could possibly go from being on the ground to, to touching her and uh, getting her exposed to those things. And again, it's not brand new to her, but we need, it's kind of surface level. That's kind of what we've established. And so we need to build some depth of understanding uh, to these sort of things with here. I really find it interesting that people would comment, run them around the round bed and get them tired, but man, it'll make everything easier. It's like, yeah, it'll make it easier. Imagine if I brought her in here and exhausted her running around the round pen and then I try to do stuff. But I would not think very highly of my skill set if that's my approach to training a horse. Get them real tired, then you can you can do whatever you want. <laughs> like that doesn't that to me that doesn't make any sense. And I guarantee you, my customers that send horses to me for training would not appreciate me taking their two or three year old and just ru running the wheels off of them on the ground so that I can then have them be cooperative with me um, under saddle. And that just doesn't doesn't make any sense. Now, there's nothing wrong with exercising a horse and letting them move their feet. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, but just to go, I'm going to get them tired in order to be able to handle them or have them want to stand still by me. I, that I, I very much disagree with that approach. There's, there's easier ways to go about it. Now there, she got a little pushy and notice she was a little bit pushy with her nose. So that's the, the zone or that's the part of her body that I'm approaching there and asking her to retreat. Cause she walked up and pushed me and, uh, that was a little rude. It's like, if you're standing there talking to another person and they walked up and just, just kind of shoved you over, you'd be like, Hey, that's kind of rude. And some of you watching this video, you're probably pushovers, figuratively and literally, where some you might let somebody do that. Some of you are, <laughs> they'd be like, put the dukes up, like, hey, them are fighting words here, you just push me. There's probably a happy medium where you just say, hey, I didn't appreciate that, and um, having them move, move around away from you. Ooh, much better response there, I like that. So I'm pretty happy with how this is going in here. I think what I might do now is, um, I'm gonna get her just a little bit better with this flag here. And then we're gonna go ahead and take her shopping. Oh, actually, there's one more thing that I wanna do with her after I just give a speech on how I don't run them around. I do wanna see what her walk trot canter looks like. Okay, and now this is important because I don't canter a horse under saddle until they have a reasonably decent canter on the ground. 
And I don't do that because I'm afraid to canter them under saddle. I do that because if they're really struggling to make that canter transition on the ground, I know that they're really gonna struggle to make it even more so on their back. And <clears throat> so I just wanna kind of get a baseline of what, you know, what it takes to get her to move her feet here. So I'm not like teaching her to lunge or to circle right now. I'm just, I'm gonna try to make it really easy and obvious to get her to go forward here. So right there, it's, she's, it was more whoa than go. I had to put some, and you can see I'm driving her here and she chose to walk while trotting. So these are just observations because she could take off running and I could be hanging on skiing behind her. You're like, oh, that was too much, you know? So I'm trying to find out based on where she's at. So right now I'm figuring out, okay, a little more woe than go, which makes sense. We got a draft cross here. Most draft crosses are more woe than go, as opposed to maybe an Arabian or a thoroughbred are probably on average more go than woe, okay? Ooh. Now I like that. It wasn't great, she was cross firing behind, but she didn't run off. She stepped into a lope. And I am very, very thrilled with that. That For a horse that's had not a lot of handling, um, for me, that was a really fantastic response. Now that was to the left. Let's go ahead and check it out to the right. Again, I'm just trying to see what is her, her go-to. She didn't run off there. She, <clears throat> she stepped off into the lope pretty nicely here. Uh, she didn't take me sand skiing behind her. She didn't drag me around. She stayed soft on the line. Again, these are all the little things. She took the right lead. She did crossfire a little bit behind, but you know that's her finding her balance in a small space here. <clears throat> so overall, that was a, that was a very nice response. Because a lot, what's a more typical response for a draft cross would be they just trot real fast, and it would take a lot more pressure to actually get them into a canter. And again, the big problem with that is once you do get them into a canter, it's probably not a canter. It's probably a gallop or a run. but she's just kind of stepping off into that lope pretty well there. Super. And when I see that, I go, boy, I can't wait to ride that canter. That's gonna be a beautiful lope to ride. Then we gotta be able to recover and come back down from it. <clears throat> she hasn't yielded to the halter yet, so I'm just, there. There she got soft. <clears throat> Good deal. So now I got her energy up, right? So basically by me stepping on the gas pedal, pushing her around a little faster, I stretched her emotions out a little bit. We got the motor going now. Now I need her to decompress, okay? So it started with me not releasing that halter until I got a soft feel there. Now I'm getting a little soft feel with the hindquarters. Take her around here and just uh, <clears throat> try to leave her in a good spot here with, we started with connection and I wanna leave the round pen with connection. She got a little bit. She read my intention as move there, so that's why I'm gonna rub her there, okay? Because it was a reaction, not a response. Very good, she's decompressing. You see her kind of shaking her head, coming off of a little bit of adrenaline. She probably switched nervous systems. There, you see that's a response, not a reaction. And then you see her kind of step into me there at the end. So we're gonna have a little bit of work to do tomorrow with getting her to own space just a little bit better. Very good. And then again, you see her get starey off into the field. That's the alert state of mind. <clears throat> so we don't really want that. But it's, she's gonna come in and out of that for a while. Each training session, I'm gonna expect her to be able to have a stronger connection and to hold the connection longer and longer each time. Um, but I'm really happy with where we're at right now. So we're gonna take her through the playground here. And uh, I wanna see what her response is when we take her shopping. So let's go. Now, I'm gonna bring the stick and string with me, but you, one of the things you have to understand when I take a horse shopping, which is a technique and concept I learned from Debbie Adcock, uh, which is about exposing the horse to obstacles and seeing how well, or what they, seeing, giving the horse a chance to experience the obstacle with zero pressure around it. You know, most of the time when we take them to obstacles, we immediately think about, do the obstacle. Can you cross it? Can you go over it or through it? You know, we think about those kind of things. I'm gonna see if she'll go through this ditch here. Um, maybe if my cameraman here can stay out ahead of me. Thank you, Tyler. Those of you that don't know, Tyler's the, the, the magic behind these videos of 
doing the, the videography and the editing. And uh, actually, we're going to be featuring him in a video here coming up pretty soon because he just started riding with me about three or four months ago. And uh, he's come a long ways with that. So I just kind of want to see how she handles this ditch here. This is a switch. Oh, look at that. We got a, we got a four-wheel drive trail pony here. I tell you what, this horse will go anywhere. She'll chase a cow up a tree down a hole. So again, shopping is about getting the horse to just see what they do with it. See if they want to investigate an obstacle. Um, so again, I'm not going to put any pressure there. We're just going to put obstacles in front of her and see what she wants to do with it. Now, if she's eating grass, I'm going to redirect her there. Because um, <clears throat> if she's eating grass, obviously her attention is on the grass. But I'm not going to drive her to the obstacle in any way. I just want to kind of see. See there, she's investigating it. Again, she's eating grass here, but her first thought was not to be like, what's that? And set back away from this obstacle here. Her, she's very comfortable by it. She's willing to eat grass around it, so that's cool. She didn't really want to step onto it, but we got a lower one down here. So I'll just walk her over here. And again, there's no expectation. She didn't have to do anything. I'm just presenting her with it. And uh, it's up to her to decide what she wants to do here. And we're just going to hang out. A little less grass over here too, huh? <laughs> Oh, of course, she found some. Her new nickname is Vacuum. <laughs> some of you might get, might get that. <laughs> uh, all right. Come on, Willow. We got we got more exploring to do. And you guys can see we got a couple of troublemakers behind us. That's our, our yearlings, Lambo and Pockets. Lambo's on the right. Pockets is on the left. They're, uh, they're ready for their turn to come out here. <clears throat> So Lambo is my uh, my wife's horse, her next project. So you guys will be seeing them in some videos here. Actually, you've already seen them in a couple videos. But I don't like to overhandle those the young ones. I, I see a lot of people, they go like, how many things can we get our young ones to do? I think there's a point where you can do too much with them and you, you end up taking a little bit of what's natural to a horse away from them. And so I don't like to, uh, I don't like to over overdo it okay now one of them's got their foot through a gate so oh this is perfect oh luckily he puzzle solved that i think i'm going to go ahead and stretch them away from the gate because i'd rather him not uh continue to do that good i'll just push them off a little bit here and go find find another obstacle to explore but i think you guys could agree with me that already this is going a little bit better She's more concerned about grass now than she was earlier, which tells me she's more in the automatic and behavior state of mind if she's willing to eat. She's more, more relaxed and settled. And eventually I'll play the don't eat grass game with her. Um, but for now, we're just gonna go do some shopping. Oh, now see there, you can see her deliberately avoid the obstacle and that's fine. Um, there's, no, no <clears throat> there's no got to here around the obstacle. But I'm not going to let her eat grass too terribly long before I redirect her. And again, I'll just yield those hindquarters. So this one, I do get the impression she's thinking about avoiding a little bit on the ends there. Now she's exploring it. Do you guys see that? Oh, and she found some more grass. That was a false alarm there. She, tr she tricked me. Tell you what though, the hard part about shopping is it's really tempting to want to go ahead and just like ask them to do things. But I feel, I think you guys could see, I could very easily ask her to do these obstacles and I think she would be very compliant there. I don't think she's worried about the obstacles. But we're just gonna, we're just taking her around and just showing them to her today. Shopping is the, on the list. You know, and you think this horse is five years old. We've waited this long to start her and everything. We don't have to fit everything into one day. I don't have to saddle her up and ride her today. I don't have to make her do all the obstacles. I can give her time to adjust and process. <clears throat> so this one, you can see the difference is now it's something up high, right? And that did startle her just a little bit. And then she's ready to eat underneath, which means she's a very low grade bothered there.
Now let's just leave her here and let's just see um, how long it takes her to switch. Because right now she's a little bit concerned would be the state of mind that she's in right now. She's not, I wouldn't say she's alert, like she's, she's concerned, which means comfort matters. When they're alert, they're thinking about being worried about their safety. When safety is on the line, they don't care about comfort, which means they will hurt themselves trying to flight from fear. When a horse is concerned, they care about comfort. So her reaching back and getting that fly off her side tells me she's also thinking about comfort right now. So she's not that bothered, okay? Because she could still notice the fly there. Now there, she's kind of kind of stepping forward into me again, getting comfortable. So again, we'll just keep presenting it to her. She can do what she wants with it. Now that was curious. She went to smell it a little bit. She stepped through it. So again, we got all this being offered to us just by being patient. If I had put pressure on her in that moment, I probably would have caused her to be a little bit more defensive. She had a little bit of a blow out there. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little pressure here. Redirect her attention back to me. <clears throat> now, kind of an interesting obstacle that we have out here. We call this our rot garden, okay? And what I use this for is to take horses that were raised in the city <laughs> and I teach them to walk and trot through it and pay attention to where they're putting their feet. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but there's plenty of horses that grow up on a ranch with big spaces, rattlesnakes, cactuses, ravines, ditches, holes in the ground, and they have to pay a lot more attention to what they're doing um, or they're going to get hurt. And there's a lot of other horses that are raised in town. Now that's my bad there, a little rope management error. <clears throat> there's a lot of horses that are raised in town. What I mean by that is even me, if I raised a horse here, they're not that exposed to you know, lots of things that they really have to pay attention to. They don't have to travel very far to water. Hey, we bring it out right to them, <laughs> okay? But horses that are, grow up on a big ranch, they really have to pay attention. It's a little more natural, a little more wild. And um, so horses that didn't get that upbringing, I like to challenge them with some of these obstacles um, to where they got to pay attention to their feet. Obviously, she's handling that very well. So horses that tend to like trip a lot, you know, again, depending it's not a health issue, which I get, I get that in the comments a lot too. It's like people think that I would be trying to train a horse here with, with the horse having a physical issue. Before I ever do anything that would be physically challenging with a horse, riding them, um, trotting and cantering on the ground, I always make 100% sure the horse is completely sound and able to do that. And I'm fairly qualified myself to, to read the horse and do that because I've done it with thousands of horses. But if there was a, a horse that has a, a behavior issue that possibly could be physical, the owners always get a, um, a vet to check them out before they bring them here. And then along with that, uh, my wife is an equine rehab practitioner, which means she's a physical therapist for horses. And so she is really good at studying movement. So when a <clears throat> horse, now I really like how she just explored that. Horses that have the slightest little, little glitch in their gait, she would pick up on, you know, more than I would. Um, you know, as good as a, a vet would pick up on the, the movement. Now she doesn't do all the ultrasounds and x-rays and the diagnostics that vet, vets do in that regard, um, but she has a great eye for that movement. And so um, I just want to share that, that we, we just take a lot of pride and care um, in our horses um, and making sure physically everything is, is ready to go. So this pole is not too difficult, but it is a, you know, versus the go under, this is a step over. And I'm telling you what, this is a four-wheel drive trail riding machine right here. <clears throat> um, the next one that's a little more challenging here is this bridge. So we'll go ahead and expose this to her. Or it's a bridge teeter-totter combo. So we'll see what, see what she thinks of this one. But she's handling this shopping really well. So I'm super pleased with kind of where she's at. And I think this is the last thing I'm going to do here before I quit her for the day. Um, we learned a, a bit about her. We know that she doesn't that easily connect with the human. She wants to kind of look off and pay attention to other things. So that'll be a big priority. Um, we know that she needs just a little bit more depth and exposure to a lot of things. Um, we did not find any major poles or problems that need to be addressed. Um, mostly the connection thing, getting her to pay attention to the human will be the key. Um, but overall, I found her very enjoyable to be around. And um, I think this is a good start for our, our partnership that we're creating here. So we're gonna bring you guys along for the journey. Um, hopefully we'll use her in some more videos. So thank you guys for tuning in. Um, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys on the next one.